Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Tyler, uh, and today is a big video. We're talking about all the different upgrades on my Pathfinder that I have made to make it more suitable for off-roading and camping. Uh, if this is your first time on my channel, consider subscribing. Uh, without any more, let's just get right into the video, guys. So the first thing you're really gonna notice uh, about my Pathfinder is just the way it sits. Um, you know, you're going to notice, hey, you know, those look like bigger tires. Obviously, we got some different wheels. Um, and so let's talk about that. These are my Falcon Wild Peak AT3W tires. I have them in the 32 by an 11 and a half R15 size. I've had them for over a year and about 18, 15,000 miles now. Um, and they serve me pretty well. I usually air them down to about uh, 17 PSI if I'm really trying to go at it and they you know they grip pretty well they're pretty uh, quiet um, on the road but they they do well enough in the dirt they don't self clearance very well in mud they get clogged but you know decent middle of the road all terrain tire it does fine on the rocks and now you can kind of see my stance you know how far the tires stick out from the body it's not really more than an inch or an inch and a half you know my wheels are 15 by 8 negative 19 millimeter offset which works out to a 3.75 backspace um but yeah you can fit 15 inch wheels on the r50 you just have to have the proper backspacing um and then the backspace on the wheels also helps make sure that my tires don't hit the uh bottom mount of the strut um, with that backspacing push tire away and out from under the strut closer look at the wheels there they're dx4 gear wheels um, dx4 wheels aren't super popular i don't see these a lot around town but i do like the design um, other than the fake uh, beadlocks i think it's a pretty good design and they've they've held up pretty well i've got mile marker uh, 435 manual hubs uh, those won't fit on all late model pathfinder stock wheels i think after 2001 you're gonna have some fitment issues um, mine with aftermarket wheels obviously is a non-issue um, but yeah, you do have to be careful on later model pathfinders. Not all manual hubs are going to fit. You either will need aftermarket rims, wheel spacers, or, uh, modify the forward part of the center board to fit your rims. But all our 50 rims are 100 millimeter, uh, center bore. Suspension, which is one of the real key things, uh, in this pathfinder I have in the front. I have KYB struts, uh, just stock replacement struts. And then I have these 4x4parts.com. Uh, front two inch lift coils. I painted them red because I have no idea why. Um, but you can get them on 4x4parts.com. They also sell rear coils, but I just have the front ones and uh, nothing else from them. Uh, they ride pretty good. OME rides better. These are a little stiff, but I can still keep up a good clip um, on you know mildly bumpy roads in between obstacles and uh, pavement handling. They're the only ones that do offer two inch lift on their own. And that's the main reason I have them. Good weight support, a good two inch lift. In the rear, so the rear's um, a bit of a conglomerate of different parts here. We have Land Rover Defender 90 coil springs, and those are part number NRC9449. Uh, it's part number, they fit, direct drop in, and they're lifting me about two and a half, maybe three inches. Uh, depends how much weight you carry in the rear. You'll also see I have those Bilstein shocks. Uh, so those Bilsteins are 33, 18, 55, 69s. They're six inch longer than stock. And to run those, you're gonna need an extended brake line. Mine's from a 2000 Frontier. And you're also probably gonna wanna extend the bump stops because the compression length of those shocks is four inches longer than stock. Um, but they've been good shocks. The, you know, the spring shock combination handles load super well. Um, and it's super good. I have the sway bar on. It's broken right now. I'm going to replace it. But I leave the sway bar on with these shocks. If you take it off, you might pop a coil. You might not. I haven't touched the pan hard bar. Uh, all my trailing arms are stock. Um, and then I do need to extend my diff breather probably just another inch or two because it pops off sometime. All right, armor. Um, now we're starting to get into some of the things that really make or break uh, my capability. These trail gear sliders are pretty awesome. I've been really happy with the performance from them. I had them professionally welded on to the unibody rail. In order to do that, you do have to cut the pinch weld just below the rocker panel. You can see I have some dents from before when I had these, before I had these. Um, 
and these have just saved my butt. You know, I'm just laying these on rocks and pivot around them way better than uh, crunching your rockers all the time. Uh, and these are just trail gear, 67 inch DIY ones. I got them off Amazon. I also purchased the mounts for them. Uh, here's a little video of them in action. You can see, uh, well, maybe you can't, that passenger slider right now, I'm pivoting on it. Um, and it totally holds the weight of the vehicle. Uh, no deflection, pretty awesome. Uh, I do consider my trailer hitch to be kind of armor. I got it at a junkyard, and it's not the OEM one. It's an OEM style, like, equivalent. Um, the OEM one uses an extra bolt compared to any other design. Uh, but these are still pretty good. I've got that D-ring hitch receiver uh, converter thing mounted on there. You can see I backed into it a few times on rocks. That saved my butt, and um, occasionally I do drag that, um, but it's better than dragging my bumper or whatever else. Um, protects that exhaust pipe a little bit. Um, but yeah, I do consider that armor. I scrape it up plenty. Uh, and now, probably the biggest and most important part of this um, off-road modifications, uh, gears and lockers. So, um, you know, a stock R50 comes with, no matter what, a front open diff, and then you get a moderately weak or an almost non-existent uh, limited slip. The non-existent limited slip is like 30 to 40 foot pounds. You'll find it in a 03 or 04 R50. But I have, oh, and there's two gear options for the R50. Uh, you can come stocks with 4.36 gears or 4.63 gears in the diff. Um, any 03 and 04 will have 4.36. So I re-geared my R50 from 4.36 to 4.63 to handle those 32 inch tires and any other weight that I'm adding to the vehicle. Um, yeah, my RPMs went up, but it shifts better. Uh, and that's been awesome. My front diff is now from a 1996 R50 to get those 4.63s. I've got a front locka auto locker in it, and that thing is a beast. Totally changed my traction game off road. And since I've got those manual hubs disconnecting, I don't have any problems with it on the road because I leave the hubs unlocked. And then you can see that limited slip diff I have in the rear. I got that off of a 2000 X Terra. And it's a 4.63 limited slip factory breakaway torque of 140 to 180 foot pounds, which is twice as strong as any factory R50 LSD. Uh, and that's pretty cool. Then here's just some small details of the build. You can see like the roof rack obviously has been modified. I've got that white out Nissan lettering that came on the uh, stock 03 SE roof rack. And I have my own little conduit creation uh, stacked on top of that just to you know kind of increase the surface area up there so i can put firewood camping chairs uh you know lighter but kind of difficult to carry stuff um that the o3 se roof rack just wasn't suited to uh you can see it's just all a mix of one inch and one and three quarter inch conduit cut bolt um it's really really nothing special uh, it does work pretty well. I've got my CB antenna mounted up there, and I do run lights off of there. I'm currently reworking on both the CB and the lights. The uh, wiring all needs. I just want to route it differently and redo it. Um, but the roof rack's been good, and at least give me a place to bolt those all on. That's not you know drilling into sheet metal or anything like that. Um, and that's good. I run rear facing lights, and then forward and out facing lights, like 45 degree angle. I've got a honeycomb grill that I got off of a 2000 to 2001 or 1999 and a half uh, Pathfinder. The grill that came with this vehicle is just beat to crap. And uh, yeah, I swapped it out. Eventually I'll have a white one and I think that'll look a tad better. But the black, the black isn't too bad. I like it. Um, and you can see that I've also added plastic dip to that front clip around my license plate. Uh, last thing that is important is I have a portable air compressor um, that I use to air up, air down, well, air up after I've aired down. Um, it's a Vire 88P, works pretty good. It's a little on the slow side, I mean, if you have to be out of there no time flat, this probably isn't the compressor for you, but I just wait there, give it 5 or 10 minutes, and I'm ready to go. Um, it's really not that bad. It can handle the 32s pretty well. doesn't overheat, nothing like that. can do it all in one run. Just run off the battery while the car's running, and you should be good. Um, but yeah, you know, that's 
that's the vehicle and it's built to you know be dailyable right you know manual hubs are trying to increase gas mileage reduce uh wear and resistance uh the locker auto locker you don't feel it while you're daily driving but it's an awesome modification off-road um, other than just minor steering adjustments you know the sliders they're useful um my shorter uh passengers will absolutely use them to get in and out of the vehicle and you know the it does pretty well for both obviously adding the larger tires is what uh made the biggest detriment in terms of daily driving um but with that 4.6 4.3 from 4.3 re-gear uh, you're almost back to factory uh, ratios, so so it handles pretty good. Other than just the higher revs, you know, you're not going to really enjoy going much above 80 or 85 in this. But I don't know who does that often, and if you do, you shouldn't be driving a Pathfinder. Um, but yeah, you know, that's what I use it for. I use it to get out, I use it to camp, I use it to go wheeling, I use it to go daily driving, and um, it served pretty well for that. Pretty happy with it. Yeah, so that is uh, my Pathfinder and, you know, what I've done to it. And that's, you know, that's most of the major modifications are right there. There's some small details missing from it. If you've watched some of my other videos, you know more about my light setup. Uh, my transfer case skid plate didn't make it into the video. You know, smaller supporting stuff like that that either, you know, isn't a key part of the build or maybe doesn't get used as much i mean it's really hard for me to bottom out specifically on the transfer case so that's why the transfer case kit didn't make it in there but you know all the suspension the tires um it's important that you put thought into those different parts of your vehicle and ultimately you want the vehicle to perform so that it meets your needs you know you want you want to go outside you want to take that stock vehicle out and see where it lacks um in terms of what you enjoy and then you want to modify it there are plenty of things i've done on my pathfinder that on other people's r50s probably wouldn't make sense you know um, and there's plenty of other things on other people's vehicles that they've either prioritized uh, more than i have or that have i may never have you know um, and it's just about making the vehicle do what you want it to do whether you're on a budget or not I cannot stress enough, go take your vehicle out stock, see what you like about it, see what you wish it could do better and modify accordingly. Um, and that's what I've tried to do. And so far I've had a lot of fun with it. Um, and my vehicles, I think it's turned out pretty good. Um, but that's my advice. Thanks for watching guys. Uh, stick around for more videos, um, but I'll see you guys later. Thanks.